What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the 10 steps to growing in a million dollar wholesaling business. So for the last couple of years, my partner and I have been able to do a million dollars or more every single year. Um, we're heading towards 5 million next year and 10, our goal is a year after that. We just opened a brand new office in San Diego, about 5,000 square feet. Um, and we're pushing super hard um, on our wholesale business. So here is the 10 steps you can take um, to point yourself in the direction of growing a million dollar more wholesale business. This usually, with how profitable these companies are, this usually will spit you out, you know, five, six hundred grand in profit a year with a few partners. So that'd be 300 each. That's yourself, five, six hundred grand take home every single year from your wholesale company. Um, and again, it's I'm going to make it super simple, super 10 step process. I'm not going to go into really in depth in each step. But I'm going to give you this the outline of the steps you need to take. So the first thing you need to do is know your skill set and focus. So the number one thing I like to tell people is, you know, focus on one thing before to get you to a million dollars. Everyone wants to go to short term rentals and do innovations and do wholesales and do owner financing and build a portfolio of you know, multifamily and commercial, I need you to choose one thing. If you're choosing wholesaling, then do wholesaling. Okay. Every single uh, day you wake up, focus on your wholesale business. And I recommend choosing one asset class, one geographic area, um, and one marketing channel to start. So if your asset class is single family, your geographic area is King County, Washington, and your marketing channel is cold calling and stick to those three until you get to 500 to a million dollars a year in revenue. Okay. So that's number one. Um, another part of number one is knowing your skill set, right? Are you better at sales? Are you better at back end? I recommend um, in this business, especially finding a partner to compliment what you're not good at so you guys can sale, scale quicker, right? Um, you know, 50% of a million dollar company is more than 100% of a $200,000 year company. So think, make sure you think about how you cut the pie. It's oftentimes better to find someone that fills in your skill set. So um, for myself, I'm better at back end work. So I went and partnered with someone who's great at sales. He runs our sales team, I built our back end team everything everyone's happy um, and we have a much bigger pie so i'm making more than i would be if i was just on my own because i don't want to manage sales people to be honest with you okay um the next thing is all the golden object syndrome okay um i don't want you to get all get, get golden object syndrome um okay so uh again it's building one bridge at a time if you're choosing wholesaling as your bridge it's focusing on wholesaling only for the next two three four five years and don't worry about your timeline um number three is you're one deal away, you guys. If you, if you haven't done your first deal, you're trying to do your first deal, it doesn't matter whether it takes two weeks, one month, three months, six months, a year, two years, five years, 10 years. In the grand scheme of things, all that matters is you eventually get that first deal done and that'll change your psychology. Once you have confidence in yourself that you can control your income and you can always produce off-market deals, you'll lose a lot of that fear of being an entrepreneur and being self-employed, okay? So do not get self golden, golden object syndrome. And number three is remember you're one deal away and do not focus on your timeline. It might take, you know, person A, I, we have students that have taken them a month to get their first deal, two weeks to get their first deal. Um, and then for myself, it took me six months to get my first deal and look where we are now. So don't focus on your timeline so much, just that you're showing up every day and putting that same focused effort in every single day. Okay, four, once you do have some traction, you do have a deal or two under your belt, the next what you thing you want to do to, to track towards building that million dollar company and then the first two or three years is paying people that are ahead of you, okay? We probably spend $50,000 a year across masterminds and groups and coaches. Um, even when I first started, I was writing checks for most of our deals um, to pay for more coaching. So don't be afraid to pay for people that are ahead of you. That's how you scale quickly. That's how you learn from their lessons. You implement what they do and you're able to take off um, and launch your business off much more quick, um, quicker. Okay. Uh, building a playbook for your business. Okay. Now that you've been paying your people, you're learning uh, more and more about the business. You have deals under your belt. You have you're focused. You're not getting sidetracked. Um, now you will be building a playbook. A playbook we build it on training little Google Sheet that you're just documenting. Your, you're starting to document your company as you grow. Okay, how you do everything inside your business. You're essentially creating a business brain that anyone can take as you onboard and train and hire. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill gaps with virtual assistants. Okay, so anything that it's a repetitive task to you now that you've built your playbook, you can start handing off to three to four dollar an hour virtual assistants. Stuff like pulling lists, skip tracing, deploying marketing, managing KPIs, managing your CRM those kind of tasks that take your time from being a business owner that's growing, you can easily delegate to a virtual assistant um, that can help take you to the next level. Once you have the baseline gaps filled with virtual assistants, um, you have stuff delegated, you have playbook built, you have consistent deal flow. Now you can build your core team. That's going to look like a transaction coordinator. You don't want a virtual assistant as a transaction coordinator. They're dealing with buyers, sellers, tenants, title companies, lending companies. It's someone you want stateside. It's part of your company that has experience in real estate. We pay ours roughly $8,000 a month. 
then you want a disposition manager, right? They're sourcing buyers, they're vetting buyers, they're selling deals to buyers, they're running that whole side of the company. You want a sales team leader who's hiring sales guys, training sales guys, managing sales guys, and growing your sales team, making sure deals are getting signed. You want a marketing manager who's deploying marketing responsible for the VA team that's pulling lists, skip tracing lists, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you want a bookkeeper, right? A bookkeeper who's um, organizing your QuickBooks, making sure all of your transactions are categorized, everything's nice and neat. Um, to that's that's one of the main things that separates good business owners from bad business owners is their books. Okay, um, most of your core team, you want to just show up and do the boring stuff of leading a company every day, right? Reviewing KPIs, making hard decisions, um, hiring, firing, training, scaling, mapping out where the company needs to go, and improving efficiencies. Right? If you're more of a kind of a COO, CEO brain, you're going to be spending most of your day-to-day -day time once you've kind of scaled out of the business, once you get to around a million bucks a year thinking and brainstorming and putting together new systems and processes for your team, your core team to take those, implement them and continue to grow. Okay, the last thing you want to do is make sure you're letting go of the vine. As you delegate, as you scale, you can't micromanage um, and you kind of have to let stuff, you know, go, go sometimes, okay? People, what you want, you want an army of people for your company that are able to do 80% of what you're able to do, okay? So you don't need people that can do it as good as you can because you most likely you won't find that, but 60 to 80% will suffice. So again, to summarize, we start with kind of knowing our skill set and focusing on one one asset class, one dem, one dem, uh, geographic area, and one mar marketing channel. Then we move into not getting golden object syndrome, making sure we're, we're staying focused. And then we're, we're, ma we're making sure we remember we're one deal away, focusing on our timeline, pay people that are ahead of us to learn, um, pay yourself and invest the rest and make sure you are paying yourself, but then investing in your education, coaching, training, um, building a playbook for your business, um, and then filling gaps with virtual assistants, filling the, the core team with stateside employees, um, showing up every day, being a leader, um, growing, hiring, firing, focusing on moving your company forward, and then delegating and letting go of the vine. So that's the 10 step process to building your um, a million dollar wholesale business. And again, once you're at a million dollars, you can continue to grow or you can start flipping, you can start buying and holding, but you wanna to get to that million dollar mark so you can build a true team um, and you can become a true business owner instead of someone that just chases golden objects all the time. So thanks for watching another video. I hope this helps you grow your business to a million dollars and beyond. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, and beyond that, you can reach out to my, my team and I, and we're happy to help you um, on your journey to a million dollars and your wholesale real estate business.